thousand bucks seems like an awful lot of money to be spending on an LED panel, bro. Does it at least connect to an app on my phone or iPad or something? Oh, you sad, sad little man. I don't think you're quite fully grasping what's happening here. This Nanlite Mix Panel 150 is not only a very high output soft source LED panel, but with one push of a button, this soft source turns into a hard source instantly. Say what? What is up folks? Today we are checking out the Nanlite Mix Panel 150. Now a few weeks ago we checked out the DNO 180 watt panel and as we saw from that video that that lighting panel is comparable to an Aries Sky Panel S30. This week, checking out the Mix Panel 150 is comparable to a Sky Panel S60. Now take that all with a grain of salt that this is just according to the Aries Photometrics app and I have not actually compared neither the DNO panel nor this Nanlite panel to real Aries Sky Panel fixtures. I'm just going off of what's on paper. Um, but I will tell you that this Mix Panel 150 is definitely rocking out more output than the DNO panel. And it is quite surprising because the DNO panel is drawing 180 watts, whereas the Nanlite mix panel is drawing only 150 watts. However, this mix panel is essentially like having three lights in one. And we'll get into that in a bit. But first I wanna talk about kind of the build quality of this Nanlite. It's all carbon fiber here on the back. You see these cool handles. Uh, one of the downsides, if you ask me about this panel is the fact that it takes 26 volt V-mount batteries. Whereas, you know, something like the DNO panel takes your normal 14 volt V-mount batteries. Um, so the 26 volts are uh, a little bit more expensive and they're not as nearly as easily as accessible. So that is a little bit of an issue. Now, if you're wondering why, how it can take a larger V-mount battery when it's drawing less wattage, uh, you'll figure that out in a minute here because Let's dive into this thing. So as you'll see here, this is a really nice uh, display and button layout on the back here. And when I tap the CCT button, it goes from soft to hard mode. Now this to me is one of the coolest parts about this mix panel is the fact that it has its own built-in softbox. So here you'll see a shot of the light from the front side, and you'll notice when it's in soft mode, it just looks like a, an LED panel with a sheet of diffusion over it. But as soon as I tap this CCT button again and go into hard mode, now that sheet of diffusion drops or disappears, and now you can see each individual LED bead. So that's really quite cool. It just, you know, you don't have to worry about bringing around a little softbox if you're a little one-man band shooting talking heads or something. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, notice here I am in silent mode right now. Again, like I said, is essentially three lighting fixtures in one. So you'll notice if I go in here and tap menu, and you'll see it says lighting mode. Now I can jump into this lighting mode and you'll see I have silent mode, normal mode, or boost mode. So this is where this light really starts to jump ahead and beyond other light panels. So, but if we wanna stay in silent mode, I'll tell you the readings I was getting from a six foot distance. I uh, took readings with my Siconic Lightmaster Pro because it does measure foot candles and lux. When I was at 5600 Kelvin, at a hundred percent in soft silent mode, I was getting 370 lux in soft silent mode. And then when I jumped to hard silent mode, it was pumping out 2200 lux at a hundred percent at a six foot distance, right? So that's what you're getting at the lowest setting. So then if I go in here to menu, go to lighting mode and let's go from silent mode to normal mode. And here you'll see one of the biggest drawbacks of this Nanlite Mix Panel 150. Well, rather I should say you can hear one of the biggest drawbacks. That is the internal fan. You have jumped from silent mode to normal mode and this is what happens. The fans never turn off and this is how loud they are and it has been an issue on the narrative projects I've been working on, you know, regarding sound. Um, so that is something to be aware of. Now the good thing about this is that now I'm in normal mode. Now it does have a higher output. So at the same six foot distance at 5,600 Kelvin, in normal soft mode at 100% at six feet, I was getting 560 lux. And then when I went to normal hard, I was getting 3,200 lux at a six foot distance at 5,600 Kelvin. So 
when you go from normal mode, from silent mode, you're already instantly getting a thousand more lux. But to take that a step further, let's go back into menu, go back into lighting mode, and now let's go to boost mode. And here you'll see and hear that the fan is now getting even louder. So now we've gone from normal mode to boost mode. Now, when I was in boost mode at boost soft at the six foot distance at 5,600 Kelvin at 100%, boost soft was giving me 740 lux. And then when I went to boost hard, I was getting 4,200 lux at that six feet distance. So just going from silent mode to boost mode literally gives you double the output. So that is pretty insane. It, 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 is, it is a heck ton of a lot of output. However, the fan is an issue, right? So when I drop back to silent mode, there it kicks off. So that is something to keep in mind and be aware of that, yeah, you can get a crap ton of output out of this thing, but it's gonna kill your audio. So if we wanted to compare on the Airy Photometrics app, we can go in here to their app and go in here to their LED panels. We can check out their S60C. So two meters or six feet uh, with the sky panel 5600 Kelvin with the standard diffusion is only giving 2,727 lux versus that boost mode of 4,200 lux. But now I'm a little confused by standard diffusion. There's a lot of different options for the S60. Let's see what their intensifier does. There you'll see now their intensifier at two meters, AKA six feet, now jumps to 4,321 lux. And you'll see here on my notes where boost hard mode was giving me 4,200 lux. And so that's pretty damn close to an S60 with the intensifier on there. So, but you'll notice the beam angle of the S60 drops to 71 degrees when we go to that intensifier mode. So if we go back to standard diffusion, now it has a beam angle of 106 degrees and drops to 2700 lux. That's pretty promising, right? Considering that this Nanlite Mix Panel 150, you can pick one up for just under a grand, uh, especially when you start looking at the prices of the Sky Panel S60. And it would probably be interesting to see how this thing compares to the Aperture Nova. So let's check that out now. So here they're saying that combining the stellar color quality with an intense output of over 9,000 lux at one meter, well now we were going by two meters. So six feet is two meters. So if we were to go from the one meter distance, which Aperture likes to measure their lights at only three feet distance, so we would say, okay, so if we were to take our reading at three feet, um, essentially what you would do, you would take that 4,200 lux and you would times that by four because that's how the, uh, the inverse square law works, right? You take the 4200 and you times that by four. And so now you're looking at when the Nanlite Mix Panel 150 is in boost hard mode, it would essentially give you 16,800 lux. Um, so that's <laughs> that's almost double uh, what the Aperture Nova is is um, is advertising, right? Um, but this is really isn't a, a video like you know trying to do a versus video or anything like that. We're just looking at at the reality of what these lights are. Um, so at the end of the day, this light is hella hella impressive. Now it has a lot of other cool features. The HSI mode, you can go in here, dial in your hue and saturation intensity. It also has an RGBW mode where you can really dial in each color channel as well as the white channel, so that's always nice. You have a very, very small gel library, very underwhelming. Um, even our friend at Gaffer and Gear channel, you know, he was talking about that as well, where the biggest disappointment for me is that they don't even have straw in here. And I feel like straw is pretty industry standard. Now, someone could argue, well, yeah, you could use some of these yellows that are in here for straw, maybe like maybe yellow 15 or yellow 30. But I'm a guy that likes to be, you know, for sure know what I'm using. So it's just a bummer that they don't have straw in here. It is a very, very small library. I was actually kind of surprised that they have lavender though, but not straw. But either way, I mean, it's kind of a bummer because even if you look at something like the, the Falcon Eyes light matte options, you know, even those Falcon Eyes, they have full libraries of Lee and Roscoe industry standard gels. So it is kind of a bummer that, that Nanlite didn't include those. 
Now the effect mode is another cool thing that's in here. So we can scroll through the different effects and they are completely 100% fully customizable, which is really rad. So right now this is in disco mode and here you'll see I'm, it's only at 9%, right? So I'm trying my best not to blow out the background behind me. Um, so as we go into the different effect modes, um, oh, there's candle and fire. Now I have been giving a, I've been getting a lot of questions about the candle fire effect mode. Here you'll see I'm controlling the dimming of it. The dimming is also controlling the dimming range. Um, but the way these are totally uh, customizable in here, you can jump from, you can add red if you want, so I can make it more red or less red. Uh, I can come over here and adjust the saturation of the effect. I can jump down here and change the speed. So if I wanted a really, really slow, slow fire, let's go all the way down, 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 down. Can literally go in 1% increments here. So if I wanted a really slow fire, I could put it at speed one, right? And there you'll see the fire. Uh, now you have the ability to turn flicker on or off. So that is the, sometimes a lot of the weird built-in uh, effects have weird flicker in them. So it is kind of cool that you come in here and turn this off or on. Uh, but even at one, if you ask me, it seems still pretty fast. It doesn't, but I mean, a fire is a fire, right? If you wanted a house on fire, maybe you would really crank the speed up. Let's see what it looks like when we go all the way up to a hundred. Well, there you go. Now, yeah, now it almost looks like a fire truck back there. But, um, you know, so you could have a field day in here, you know, totally dialing in each of these effects. Um, so let's go up and see what else we got in here. Disco, there's your paparazzi. And see, you can change the CCT. You can change the speed of that. TV, you can change your green magenta shift, CCT, speed, dimming range. Police car, you can change the color and the mode. Storm, I mean, I mean, you can really dive in here and really get creative with your storm effect. Pulse, flash, CCT loop, and a hue loop. So you do have some pretty cool effects in there. It's not a huge library, but it's definitely more than I mess around with because I don't mess around with any of them. Uh, but you know, every now and then it is good to have the police or cop car mode and you know you are able to go in there and change it to looking more like an EMT truck or maybe a fire truck or whatever the case may be so that is nice um, but yeah I think the coolest part about the panel is the very fact that it is essentially three lights in one with the silent mode normal mode or boost mode and then in each mode you get the difference between soft or hard so it, it, it is really, really dang nice. You get three lights in one, and then each of those you have the ability to make it a soft source or a hard source. Uh, I think that's really rad. And you have a really uh, strong output, um, even at a six feet distance. So yeah, that's kind of my take on the Mix Panel 150. As I've been talking here, you've been seeing some BTS of me using it on sets. Uh, but now I think I'm gonna show you a few examples where it really was shining for me. This first one here, we were using it in the woods and it was primarily my main key light out in the woods. Now I did have to run a stinger <laughs> a pretty far distance because I didn't have any 26 volt V mounts. But uh, at the end of the day, I am glad I had it with me out there because it was definitely uh, pumping out some power. In, in this shot right here, it was our, my main key light. Now this is just your normal day interior, right? But you know, really nice for setting a, a really strong key light. What I love about having a panel that has this much output is that I can put a really heavy diffusion like a magic cloth in front of it, which a magic cloth is uh, really probably three and a half stops of light loss you're losing with a magic cloth and something like this panel it's not really hurting it now your sound guy might have a problem with it <laughs> but you know you, you have to figure that out on the day um that is that is the biggest downside with this light there's no way to turn those fans off it, unless you want to lose you know half your output and drop back down to silent mode so that is um you know, it's just one of those things. Keep in mind, most of the time, and when I say most of the time, I mean all the time, I am heavily diffusing this thing. If not with the magic cloth, then with a half silent grid cloth. All right, folks, so I think that's gonna do it on this mix panel 150. I'm a fan of it. You know, I bought this with my own money and I don't regret it. It's definitely the largest amount of money that I've ever spent on a light, but 
I, I honestly don't regret it. I think it was a strong choice. I'm loving it. I use it all the time. Um, it's, it, it can really pump some level in the room. Um, and, you know, it, it's almost good enough to where if your sound guy is really having a problem with it, you could park it outside, put it on that boost mode, and then get that extra oomph through the windows. Um, but it may have to be parked right up on that window, right? It just depends how large of the space you're trying to fill. All right, folks, so that's going to do it for this week. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in checking out more behind the scenes on the projects that I work on, that I would encourage you to check out the Dog Times Patreon. That is definitely the number one way to support the channel if you're a fan. So huge shout out and gigantic thank you to all of my Dog Times Patreon members. And in reality, the Patreon isn't really your normal Patreon. It's actually more of a indie filmmaking club. It's really rad. We have weekly lighting challenges. Uh, we do work feedback talk all things pre-production, production on the day, and post-production, doing post-mortems, looking at what worked, what didn't work, and how we can improve ourselves moving forward as freelance cinematographers. So if you're interested in any of that, you might want to check it out. Here's the link and down in the description below, and I will see you next week.